I don't know what this sound means to you, but for me, this sound used to mean warm summer nights spent outside as a kid. Lately, it's had a different meaning, though. It's a sound I hear throughout my day, a gentle reminder that I'm living with my food. Hi, my name is Ashley Quinn, and these are my crickets. I came to live with them while on a journey to navigate much larger issues, namely, how climate change is affecting our food, and in turn, how our food is affecting the climate. The average American eats 270 pounds of meat a year, almost double the recommended amount of protein for a healthy diet. The production of the livestock to feed this habit contributes to 18% of our greenhouse gas emissions. And we use one third of our world's available land to grow this food. These numbers are only going to increase. In the next 30 years, we are going to need to raise 70% more meat to feed the world's growing population. This last number, coupled with the effect of livestock farming on our planet, has a lot of scientists and policymakers worrying. And so, what's a lone interaction designer to do? In a world where the future of our food is in jeopardy, I created a project that is rethinking our reliance on meat and the processes by which it is raised. Homegrown is designing concepts for cultivating alternative proteins in the home for those who aren't afraid to get their hands dirty. It follows a framework meant to guide and influence how we interact with our food and help us to adjust to what's happening in our environment. The products and processes designed under Homegrown need to provide people the tools to grow their own food and create sustainable living for the masses. It needs to provide transparency to our food system and create value beyond a dollar sign. And it needs to inspire users to take pleasure and pride in the simple interaction of growing their own food. We already have the means to cultivate plenty of our food in our homes, making us more self-sufficient and less reliant on unsustainable resources. But how can we start growing meat independently? You certainly can't raise a cow in a New York apartment, but there are smaller sources of protein that you could start raising. The Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations released a study in 2013 arguing for edible insects as a likely and powerful alternative to our current propensity for meat. And I'm starting with crickets. Crickets are essentially mini livestock with a very small footprint and incredible efficiency. It takes one gallon of water to make one pound of crickets versus 1,000 gallons of water to make one pound of meat. To give you an idea of what that means, our current intake of meat would be 270,000 gallons of water a year, or 11 full swimming pools worth for each individual person. They're also efficient eaters. It takes six times less food to sustain them. Now imagine if that food came from our compost or our leftover produce in our fridge. We no longer have to grow food to grow our food. We can instead grow it to feed ourselves. The homegrown cricket farm is designed for the novice urban farmer. It takes into consideration the guidelines set out earlier with the goal of democratizing our food, connecting us to it, and encouraging sharing and advocating for a cause. The current model is for a two-person household. The 10-gallon container holds 500 crickets and will provide enough nutrition to replace two meals a week with crickets as the main entree, like cricket tacos. Crickets are kind of the gateway bug of the entomophagy world. <laughs> entomophagy being the consumption of insects or food. They're nutritious sources of protein that are low in fat and calories. In comparison to meat, they compete on all levels and are considered a complete protein, meaning they contain all of the essential amino acids in the correct amount to provide su sufficient nutrition for man. The home cricket farm is set up to allow for the cricket population to continue to sustain itself perpetually so the home farmer can maintain their food source. Some food for thought. We use food to nurture, but do we ever think about nurturing our food? For the past four months, I've been living with my crickets to not only experiment with growing an alternative protein, but also to understand their needs. Like any of the food we eat, the happier and healthier they are, the more nutritious they will be and the better they will taste. By taking the time to consider and care for our food, I believe we can start seeing the inherent value in it on a much different scale than when buying it off a grocery store shelf. 
a little effort goes a long way. Like a lot of living creatures, crickets require nutritious food and fresh water. In order to maintain the population, they need a substrate to lay eggs. And they prefer dark private spaces to congregate in. We can easily hack existing products to meet the needs of the crickets we are raising, which opens up the possibilities for individuals to become farmers without needing to buy expensive kits or equipment. Where nurturing your food is the relationship between farmer and their crop, advocating for your food is your relationship to everyone else and how you share your experiences with it. There are many ways we can interact and share with people about our experiences. We can do so over a meal, where the subject matter is also that night's main course. We can share thoughts and ideas online, which is, allows us the opportunity to share with people around the world. And we can speak to ex experts, gaining new knowledge and providing unique points of view to problems. By sharing these experiences, we are able to accomplish the main goal of this whole process, to ask people to join in on a movement to not only look at what and how we're eating, but to be present and active in deciding what future we create for our world. I'm working with fabricators to turn the homegrown cricket farm prototype into a flat pack version with open source plans available to the public. I'm also looking into other alternative proteins that we can be grown in the home. The next phase will be focusing on harvesting mushrooms. I wanted to leave on this one final note. What are we here for, if not to enjoy life eternal, solve what problems we can, Give light, peace, and joy to our fellow man, and leave this dear fucked up planet a little healthier than when we were born. Thank you.